Teach, we've got a we've got a belter here, haven't we? What a way to finish the season. Oh, mate, this is two informed players. I mean, Craig Waddingham, the players he's beat this weekend, he's beat Gareth and he's beat Mick and, and he's just been on fire, hasn't he? I watched his games and same with Shane to be honest. Yeah, the performance from Shane to beat Tom Cousins, who has who's been the dominant player this week. He was absolutely incredible winning yesterday. And looked like he wasn't gonna. It looked like nobody was gonna stop him today. But it took a brilliant performance from Shane Thompson to do just that. But it was built on the back of a quick start, and he's not gonna get the quick start here. That's unlucky to go in off in that way. Oh, definitely. Um, coming off the bottom cushion like that, and I, d I don't know if he's hit another ball that's gone up the side. But you know, Sh Shane's Bray, he, he sort of tries to park, hit the bottom rail, and park it back in the middle of the table. So. From to go, to go in off up here because if he doesn't go in off there they're, they're pretty tricky but because he gets this free shot sorry not free shot ball in hand you know he put the white ball pretty much anywhere behind that ball climb and and the way Craig's been playing this weekend I, can't, I, I just never see him missing no he never looks like he's going to miss a pot as well as the the trophy the prize money there's also a small matter of the champion of champions at stake here. The winner will be added to the champion of champions event, which will be next Saturday. So that's fifteen thousand pound winner as well. I think it's it? twelve actually. Twelve. Twelve. Is it? Yeah, but it's still it's a you know it's an extra tournament. Yeah, Shane lied to me before. Then yeah, that's all. <laughs> it's a big, big tournament at the end of the year. A big carrot. And oh, everybody okay. wants to be in. I was speaking to Shane earlier because he beat me in the quarterfinals and he said to me, you know, people are saying he's been having a quiet season and he said, Shane openly said he doesn't think he has. He's had two quarterfinals, a semi-final and now a final. And he said, with the standard that's on this tour, he, he doesn't think it was quiet. He just compared to the first year of him winning three out of eight. Yeah, four finals, three three wins. Yeah, it, 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 that's the thing. You can only ever compare it. And I think that the reason you say quiet year is he's been the number one player all year. And until this run here, he was around the 16 mark. He was sort of in and out, 16th, 19th, and back in. And, you know, he's been dancing around that 16th place. But this run here has pushed him up to 10. If he wins the final here, he'll go up as high as fifth, I believe, in the rankings. And therefore, what a, you know, actually, when you put it that, that way, you know, that a trophy, sixth in the rankings, that's a decent season. That's, that's more than a decent season. Yeah. Especially just with the standard nowadays. I know we keep going on about the standard of the tour, but it's just frightening. It really is. Like Ronald McCarthy is world champion, world masters champion, and he hasn't won a game this weekend. Yeah, two seven six losses as well. It's just shows how good it is. Well, Craig has gone through these very nicely indeed. When we done our player profile a while ago, they said, who's your favourite player to watch? And mine is Craig Wanningham. Yeah, he's got to be up there for a lot of players, hasn't he? Very eye-catching. Great style around the table. Backs his potting. Punches them all in. And yeah, makes the game look simple, as a lot of the top players do. Mm, really I think his cue action is just perfect, isn't it? He just he backs it all the time as well. The finish against Scott Gillespie at six all. He had a tough first red, and you know, it was long, it was off angle, and I think it's the centre of the pocket, and he's just rolled him in from there. And I was sat actually watching it, and I said to him, it was Matt Briley I was watching it with. I said, I don't fancy missing this long pot, and he didn't. I think what you get though with with Craig is he's happy. He backs his potting to the point where his patterns. You could be ultra critical if you wanted to and say that maybe there are better patterns out there, but he puts his patterns to his potting. Yes, Does that make sense? Yeah, and um, Even that finish against Scott Gillespie at the end, I think other players might have left a different ball last mm -hmm. ball and maybe looked to get on the eight ball easier, but he w he knew what he was doing and happy to leave what he left, and yeah. he's never going to miss that eight ball when he gets as tough as it was. That's that's right in his wheelhouse. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that 15-second shot got caught up with him as well. He went the wrong way, and he thought... Possibly, yeah. Uh, take, bite the bullet here and, yeah. you know, take a toughier, yeah, toughier you route, but back himself. That's the one thing from the commentary box you can't really get relate to that much, is that, that 15 seconds it catches. It's just... You just have to go with what you see. Oh, white. Oh, white straight in, in. And look at Craig's face, he knows. But it's not as easy as a layout as it was in the last one. Yeah, that's what Shane just wanted a chance at the table. When he gets there, he's going to look and think, hang on a minute, there's some work here. 
Mm, and look at Craig, look at Craig's reaction there. He knows, because I've never, I've never seen Craig get a break like that. Actually, to be honest, he usually, he usually hits him a lot harder. He's been doing it all weekend long. He's been, he's been popping the break. He's not been, I see, yeah. He's not been powering it. He's not been giving it the the absolute business. He's been. It's been controlling the cue ball with it, actually, because he's getting huge explosion without hitting them as hard as he can. But also, he's, it allows him to control the cue ball more, more consistently. Yeah. Um, his break was a little bit hit and miss in the semi-final, but prior to that, it's been fantastic. Yeah, you don't really have to put too much power into it on these tables. And do you know what? A big shout's got to go to the referees as well. There's a skill and an art to racking the balls, right? Perfect. So to get the splits every every frame very rarely you see a, a slack rack as you call it and that's just down because our referees are so good it, it is tough as well i'm not going <laughs> it's, it's a really it's, it's, yeah and i've what <laughs> the funny thing is i watch i watch some of you guys practice and i, I watch you in tournaments and you'll moan if they aren't perfect and shane's missed his cannon hit and he's lucky not to go in off i'll come back to what i was saying in a moment he was trying to cannon the red and yellow th together he's not got that mm. Yeah, yeah, so that was a, for Shane, that's that's a poor shot. But I will give him a bit of due. He's only had the queue for three days. He has. Yeah, he's taken, taken to it pretty quickly, pretty well. But yeah, he's every now and then it just catches him out on subtle positional shots. But that one there, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's actually got quite a, quite a wide in. Yeah, it just shows how good he is, doesn't it? That you can just go to Jason Owens and pick up a cue and now he's in the final. Yeah. Did you hear how he damaged his cue, celebrating <laughs> team victory in, in, in Ireland? In Ireland, yeah. We were talking about it before we went in the show. Oh, oh, that'll do. That'll it's do. a delicate little one, isn't it? A little jabby one, yeah. but doable. I think he's going to have to play this. He's got to try and screw in between the two yellows on the right-hand side rail and then probably hit the bottom rail and then leave himself a long red. But that's just what it looks like from here. If he can oh, really get into it, he yeah. might be able to hit the first yellow and hold it there. Yeah, there no, he's gone your way. And that's excellent. Spins it around. That's beautiful. Yeah, they're such tough shots with left-hand side. You know, <laughs> that just looks so simple on TV. But I know playing that, you can miss that by so much. And it can make you look foolish, especially on this table. Is he going round the black to put it in the same pocket, or is he checking it up? So he doesn't... Oh, he's oh no. Oh, Shane. Oh, I can't see him to tell whether he's happy or not. I oh, think he's, he, uh, he's checking out the angle. He's OK. Yeah, Just for a second. As an ex-pool player, Simon, you know facial yeah. recognition. Yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> looking well. at the body language yeah. there, and, and Craig would have been as well. Yeah. Uh, but he does complete the finish, so both players now reverse clearance to get into this match. Both players on the board in this race to eight for the Pro 8 final, for the Pro 8 title. And both players now up and running. Shane will feel a lot better for that one. And Craig Wanningham, do you know what? It, uh, people need to know he's eighth in the rankings and he's missed two events. He's missed two tournaments, missed the Pro Cup and missed the Players' Championship and he finds himself eighth in the rankings. But he made a final of the Grand Slam and he's made three other semi-finals before this final. Yeah, he still hates me from when I fluked the ball against him in the last semi-final he played. <laughs> that was some, uh, some semi-final, that was, that was <laughs> yeah. incredible. Some fluke as well. There's some fluke, yeah. I always, tell, I always remind him seen him in a nightclub afterwards and he looked at me and just shook his head I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you look at Craig and you know what I love about him as well when he plays pool he, he seems to be quite arrogant on the table and that's why he's so good but off the table he's one of the nicest guys yeah. you can meet he yeah he carries himself well on the table I like mm -hmm. the way he, I like that kind of bullish confidence. bullish kind of confidence yeah, that definitely. he has out there you know he he's, he's a real it, it, it's a real um, powerhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost like some players could really, you know, wilt against him because of that kind of vibe he gives off. Yeah, like an intimidation. Yeah. And you know what? And that's why he's done so well in his pool career. A slight miss hit on the break this time mm. from Shane, but the reward is is huge. Mm. These have come out very nicely for him. Really good chance here on yellows. The only ball I'm kind of looking at with a little bit of work maybe required is that eight ball if it doesn't go bottom right. Mm -hmm. He can nudge into that bit. Maybe. I was thinking about maybe nudging into it now. If we nudge into it now, go into the red. So he nudges the black past the other red, and it'll go into the bottom left as we look. It should leave him a choice. Mm. 
And also, if he doesn't land on the one over the bottom right as we look at it, he's not taking it. But I was thinking he had a long, he had a big well, pocket. It, there's every chance it actually might go top right if it doesn't go uh, bottom right. It might, sorry, not top right, top left rather. And therefore, he could leave the one over the bottom right and not actually have to do anything. Yeah, yeah the top boys don't like playing many cannons, no. do they? Especially when your cue ball's as good as Shane Thompson's is. Right, go. He has gone for it, and this is not good. And that is why they don't like playing cannons. Yeah. It's, like it's one of those where you look at it and go, oh, the cannon, how can it go wrong? You, you hit the red, you're going to be on one to the top left or one to the bottom right, but couldn't go much worse. No, he couldn't, because the ball that he's on as well seems to be so straight, he's going to have to pump it in, and I think he's bridging. I think he has to play it off the yellow and, and maybe try and get the yellow out and, and give it, you know, but then you're taking a risk that you... That you're gambling whether you get an angle. Yeah. And the red's gone over the yellow on the bottom right as we see it. But that in international that's not that's not um, that's not good at all, is it? Yeah. With the tactical with no. the loss of turn shot. Can he clip the one in now and get into it straight away? Yes. What a shot. What a shot. Brilliant. Wow. That is absolutely brilliant. Okay. Eight ball doesn't pass the red to the bottom right corner, but it has a, he has a way of getting to it. That was such a good shot, that. People don't realise, especially on this, this table, because this, this table only got re-clothed, did it, just before the event, and the cushions and the cloth are so skiddy. Playing shots like that, it's like, it's like he's been practising on it for weeks. Oh, Shane, and then he does that. I think he was trying to hit the right-hand side of that red to move it and then leave himself a long yellow. Yeah, he was definitely trying to move it, wasn't he? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Shane, you didn't do this against me, mate. <laughs> Yeah, a huge frustration for Shane Thompson. He yeah. dug himself out of a big hole and then puts himself straight back in another one. Uh, he's just such a perfectionist, isn't he? Something like this. He just you rarely see it. He's playing the double or the cock that. Oh, oh, Shane oh, Thompson. Oh, oh my wow. God. Oh my I've just nearly fell off the chair, Simon. <laughs> that is filthy from Shane Thompson. He raised his hand, so I mean he was playing the double, but just for the way the eight ball comes out. Oh my That oh, is wow. incredible. What a shot from Shane Thompson. What an out from Shane Thompson. <laughs> he was nowhere two or three times in that visit. And have a look at this one. That is, that's, that's on the, the white was so close to the rail as well. So to cue it like that, at that pace, Will Caldwell, get your highlight reel out. Yeah, what do you make of the, the hand of apology? Because he was trying to make the double and he was trying to go into the ball. I mean, what? what? <laughs> no need to apologise for that one. No, it's, no, no. Maybe because it's such low chance, but and Shane's such a nice guy, but I don't know, I wouldn't be apologising. I'd be fist pumping. Yeah, yeah, give it large. Yeah, might have done a rollover or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was that good of a shot. I'd be, I would have been, I would not have been apologising. I mean, that was, that's the, I mean, we waited all weekend long. That's the best shot we've seen all weekend long, isn't it? Definitely. That is absolutely incredible. And that, that's, I know we're early in this match, but that's massive. That really is. Because you know when you're sat in that chair, Craig Waddingham sat there and thinking, OK, right, I'm going to get to the table in this frame. Mm. And all of a sudden, two, well, it's happened twice. I mean, two times in that frame, you, you think, Craig sat there thinking, yeah, I'll, I'll get to the table in this mm -hmm. frame. And twice he's come up big. Sometimes when you sat in your seat like that, you're actually planning out the route for when Shane misses. Yeah, you're well, thinking, I'll go this way, I'll go there, because you've got the shot clock as well. Yeah, especially, I mean, now it's 30, but especially back end when you're at 15, you do kind of think mm. about those cer certain ways of dealing with things. And the last thing Craig needs now is a dry break or an in-off. Oh, flushed him. He's not got a ball. Flushes him, he oh, deserves yellow, one. Yellow? No. Oh, no friends. Oh, it's on Scrappy. There's a couple of problem balls. Thought that yellow was dropping top right. Same, a few balls rattled there. Oh, he has to be patient. It's a race to eight frames. He has to be patient and wait for his opportunities. Well, compared to the out that Shane's just made, this looks easy, <laughs> but it is not easy. There is a lot going on here. A couple of really bad balls. And that shot's better than it looked because if you the other angle, you're going away from your work, so he's actually played that perfect. Perfect pace, perfect amount of side. Now he can get up table and get closer to his work. It's 
a lovely shot again. I tell you what, this will be some finish as well. Got two problem balls here. Not sure how he's going to develop them both, but Shane will. Yeah, he's got an angle to go into the, the red and yellow by the eight ball now, but the other red above I it is half in the way. I think he's going to go into the eight ball first and flick into the yellow, like he tried. Well, that will, if he's on a red to the left centre, I was going to say, it, but he may not be going by his body language. If he's on one to the left centre, moving that eight ball the way he has has just opened up that red a little bit more to the bottom left-hand corner. Mm -hmm. Not easy to get there, but it has half opened it up. No, he's not on it. He's coming off the cushion first. And this time he doesn't come up with the magic. And he has left a chance here for Craig Waddingham, but He's the two problem reds are the two problem yellows. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a little way to open up the frame for him. But I think he might just pot this and then play a snooker over. But I don't know if Craig Waddingham likes snookers. Is he going to try and screw into it now? <coughs> Very possibility he might play the plant and screw into his red and yellow now. Because the yellow on the right hand side of the table, which is tied up with the red, might go into the bottom left hand corner as well. Yeah, he's. I think he's going game. I like it. Knuckle. No, oh, he's been unlucky. Just got the knuckle. And that's not works. <coughs> yeah, he's going to be chasing this finish now. But we go for his potting abilities. Is he going trying to develop a ball? Is he just trying to try and roll it in? He's playing the snooker. Yeah, not quite got the snooker. Mm. Shane's still got the same problem as Craig, though. So I've got two balls tied up. Oh, wow. Has he been lucky? No. I think he used up all his luck when he apologised last frame. Yeah, excellent pot, excellent cannon. Didn't have too much control where the cue ball was going to finish, but that has not finished good. He's looking at playing a little glance off the red here, trying to pot that red. The problem with that is it opens all the yellows up yeah. when playing this shot. I mean, what a shot this will be, by the way. Oh, yeah, that was asking a lot. Yeah, and look at the way he's left the yellows. Wide open chance now for Craig Waddingham. Yeah, he's just going to... The one near the right-hand centre is going to be his last ball. Well, it should be. Doesn't really matter with Craig. You can pop him from anywhere, so... He's just taking his time over. He knows this is a big frame. Uh, so he's going a different way now. He doesn't want to be straight, though. I think he's okay. I think he's got a little bit of an angle. Just won't be on the rail. But getting on the black ball might be a bit trickier than it looks because I can't see what angle he's got on this one, but he wants to come out quite a bit so he can... See how he, he's going to have to top through now and get straight on this yellow, and if he's short, getting on the black might be a problem. Yeah, he wants to get to at least straight on that yellow mm. to the left centre pocket. I mean, his body language says he's okay. Yeah, he's okay there. But that's why I didn't want to be straight the one before. Well, he is short, though, but I think he's just about got straight enough just to nip it. Yeah, see, this is that's where I thought the problem might happen. He's, oh, he's okay. Yeah, fascinating frame, that one. Shane Thompson with the first opportunity. Couldn't do enough with it. And Craig Waddingham got a couple of opportunities himself and ties the scores up. Mate, it's Desmond. What's that saying? Yeah, so does Stephen. I actually used to think his 
Steve Hall laughed at me once. I was playing on the tour, and he came up to me and he said, "What's the, what's the score?" And I was currently drawing four all. And I went Desmond, and he looked at me, and then he looked at the scorecard. He went it's four all. I just th thought, just thought Desmond was drawing <laughs> until I got explained. This was only about six months ago. Oh wow! <laughs> that Desmond meant Desmond two two, and my mind was blown. But you live and you learn. So cheers for that, Steve. You're watching. And that's what Craig needed after that big finish from, from Shane, wasn't it, to get back in the game? Yeah, when he broke dry, he probably feared the worst that he was going to go 3-1 and, and be really starting to feel a bit frustrated with the way he wasn't getting the opportunities. But 2-2, two -two, probably feel slightly better of the two players, actually. Although both players know they're into the match now. They both know they're playing well. They've both taken out a couple of really good finishes. And over the next 34 minutes, I think it's going to come down to the player that can get the chances but take the majority of their chances they each need six ice cream that really that is a perfect break but oh my oh I thought it was going to go dry me and Mark were talking about this break in the in the amateur final and Johan Attar didn't hit the break well twice I think it was he skidded off the pack and one of them he made six balls yeah or nice. five sorry and then Ian Alley hit them cream twice and went dry, and it just shows that the break's the most important. Oh, oh, <laughs> he stayed down, didn't he? Thought he missed. Thought it wasn't going to reach. The, the break's the most important shot in the game, I 100% agree with. But I think as you go down the standards, too many people blame the break for winning and losing, whereas it, you, you see it at the elite level. There are matches where you'll, you won't get, like the final here, you won't get eight chances to win. Um, and you have to deal with that. But okay. there are times when you will get enough chances and you don't take them. That and, is, that and is then, definitely, yeah. And you'll look back and, well, I had some dry breaks there. And so, but it's some, you've got to actually look at how many opportunities do you actually have to win frames. And and you see it, and the, obviously there's some phenomenal players on the Challenger Series, there really is, but you can see you know, the, the difference mm -hmm. in terms of just how clinical the top yeah. players are in comparison to them. And yeah. Therefore, the break becomes just slightly less important because mm -hmm. I was actually speaking and when I, when I lost to Chris Mellon earlier on this week I lost 7-4 and my friends was like you got a bit unlucky with them dry breaks and I said to him but if I didn't make them two mistakes earlier on in the game yeah I wouldn't have had to worry about the breaks and he was like yeah and I was just it's one way to look at it you can't always blame the breaks but it does take a massive part of the game and the top players practice the break. They practice, cre they practice cream in it. I know. I remember watching Tom Cousins years ago. He's probably got the best break in the history of pool, hasn't he? And he was playing like a big money match. And on the stream, all he did for 40 minutes before the game was just break. Yeah. A few little stun shots to see how the cloth worked and just broke. Oh, wow. Very clever from Shane Thompson. Is he on the next wall, though? No. No. I mean, he can trim this in, but the white will will be travelling. Or oh, is, is he looking at the swerve? I think he's going to trim this in. The white's going to hit the jaw, and he's going to be on the on the yellow. There's the jaw, but he's not on the yellow. And he's this this is a prime while well, we're talking about the breaks, because now that. Craig Wanning comes to the table, he's favourite to win this frame. So if we fast forward and Craig was to win this frame, and you talk about it in context of the break, Shane's had the advantage on the break. Mm -hmm. Shane's had the one first break where he's he's gone uh, in off, but unluckily he went in off. All the other breaks out of five, so he's had four, four first chances, and he could be 3-2 behind. So you, yeah. you can't always throw it all on the break. No, I totally agree with you. I think that... No offence to anyone use it, but I think the break is a get-out clause for people not wanting to admit their mistakes, and I've always said that. I think if you want to get better play, you're going to have to take a bit of responsibility. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, there will, there will be times. I mean, Craig Waddingham yesterday in the semi-final against Tom Cousins. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, he did not get seven chances to win that match. Mm -hmm. Tom Cousins got there... Um, got the chances in, he took them. It was a brilliant performance from yeah. both. It was like it was like Tom Cousins versus Chris Mellon last night in the final. Yeah. And I think Tom said, has Tom had five or six off his own break? So Yeah. And, you know, and Chris Chris didn't it. make a ball off his break the whole way yeah. through. So that and it's about getting those opportunities. The breaks gives you the chances, but you still have to play some great ball to 
to make it relevant. Yeah, I agree. And just using the knowledge of the table there from Craig. Yeah, pinch in the pocket. Pinch in on the near on the near side at that weight, allowing it to drop. I've seen Shea cheek. Um, seen Shane shaking his head in the top left hand corner then. He didn't think that should go in, but when the cloths and tables are, and the balls are so new. But it wasn't one of those that was a miss pot that dropped in. Craig played to do it for that yes, to happen. Definitely, definitely, so we could hold for the next red. Oh, he's hit this oh, one short. Hit, yes. He's okay, he just got there, but when he hit it, you can see the, the grimace he pulls there. Not happy, but he's okay. Doesn't want to kick though or something like that. No, he's okay. And three, two in front. And the big one is that it's Craig Wad's break. Yeah, and can he solve the issues of his break? It's uh, not been his match on the break so far, and because of that, being 3-2 in front, is you know he's going to be very, very happy. So while we've got a little, while the referee racks him up, Simon, what do you think of the challenges next year? Who do you think are the danger men? Well, it's going to, the whole landscape of the poor world is going to look incredibly different next year isn't it because we're going from 48 to 96 obviously we've got this, the the 16 challenges coming up we've also had some wild card announce uh, well quite a few wild card announcements mm -hmm. and we've got some more coming over the space of the next couple of days um, i know there's a big big one coming tomorrow so watch this space um <laughs> there's some excitement in the background there so yeah watch this space I think that'd be uh, sometime when well, we got the, the TV show tomorrow night it'll yeah. be announced around the TV show yeah so um, tuning guys yeah, you won't want to miss this one but to answer your question which I'm dancing around very nicely um, and you can't help but look at Callum Singleton can you he's you look at what he's done this year on the Challenger Series he's won a title but he's been consistently good you look at what he did in Ireland you look at what he did in the Players Championship he definitely looks like he's the big big danger coming out of that 16 from the challenges and he's the sort of player that it would be no surprise to anybody to see him win a pro series title next year yeah you could see him coming to do what craig wanningham's done this year yes yeah he could be the craig wanningham of 2023 mm. for sure in a completely different style but absolutely that level uh, he's won major titles in his career. He's a former world master. Uh, I expect big things from him, and mm. he, he does it in a really classy way as well. Yeah, he does. I love his attitude and that around the table, the way he plays the game, his cue action. He's just an all-round player, isn't he? And it's going to be great having him in it. It really is. But there's everybody that's earned their way through by that 16 is is going to have a say. It's going to be dangerous, and as are some of the wild cards that have been announced. Mm. Who do you think the the best snooker player will be at pool? That's a very, very good question. I think uh, it will be Tom Ford. Joe O'Connor's going to have a say yeah, in that he is. conversation. Uh, no, I agree, he is. Seen he was practicing pool the other day in Dave Gilbert's club as well. So they're taking it seriously, these snooker boys. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we know that Mark Williams loves playing. We know that he spends as much time on the pool table as he has been on the snooker Ooh. table lately. So. And Mark Allen, when he played at the Players' Championship, was was fantastic. It took a brilliant performance from uh, Mick Hill to, to keep him out of the, yeah. the Players' Championship final. Big shout out to Luke Gilbert. He played awesome that day. He was the only person to go 100% in the group, am I correct? Luke so Gilbert, yeah. yeah. Luke yeah. Gilbert he was, was awesome yeah. that weekend. He was, yeah. Oh, that's a good shot by Craig. He doesn't want to be Bridger. <laughs> now, this... <laughs> Pills a crazy game because if that if that pulls up an inch or goes an inch further, he doesn't miss this spot. Yes. But this is what is it called a Chinese snooker down the pub? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it changes the shot tenfold, if not more. I mean, I would miss this a million out of a million. I'm the world's worst bridge assignment. But Craig Wallingham, oh. uh, that is that, that that's nearly as good as the shot that Shane Thompson played. I was just played. about to say, it's I think that's just as good as Shane. Yeah. It's a full length ridging shot, <laughs> and he's found the gap and everything. Uh, yeah, it's not just the pot. Look at the cue ball; it's, it's phenomenal. It's oh. an absolute frame winner. And then he's a little bit. I, I still back him to drop this in the middle, but oh my goodness me! Yeah, watch the cue ball here. Look, center that. of the pot. He didn't even touch the sides. The problem with coming up short here is he's not going to be able to get nicely on the eight ball. Best best he can do here is get the centre of the table. 
And then he's probably going to have to play it in the pocket near his hand. He's missed it. Missed Strange it thing well, about that. Yeah, he's missed it on the wrong side. Unless yeah. he's trying to get the eight ball to the bottom right hand corner, there's more gap there than it looks. But yeah, centre. You'd think if he's going to miss it, he'd miss it on the straight side, trying to hold the cue ball. Mm. So this is a great chance for Shane to go Desmond three three. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that for ages. Yeah. Does not want to be bridging. He's okay. He can get to the right hand side of the cue ball. And there's probably there's probably been more mistakes in this semi final so far than probably both of them put together in the last match. But that just shows what a few hour break can do. Well, and the pressure of a final as and well. And the pressure of a final. Yeah, it's always on my mouth. See that uh, Craig Wanigan's been drinking a few energy drinks just to keep him going because they are long events, you know. Yeah, you've got to kind of go and reset and come back and yeah, it's 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 it, that's part of the pool world though, isn't it? It's part of the you've all been playing club tournaments, tour tournaments for years, and it's that, that mentality of winning one, resetting, going again because you're used to playing sometimes. Six, seven, eight times a day. Yeah. Less in the pro series, but it's still, you have to be ready to go and ready to do it. And that's where all the mental strength comes in. And, you know, it's it's not a surprise when you see the same boys around the around the finals all the time, because it's not just how good they are at pool, it's how good they are upstairs. And, you know, that's what myself massively has got to get better on. You know, there's a lot of players that have the talent some better players who have the talent, but they're not as strong upstairs. And Shane, Craig Ward, Mick Hills, Gareth Parks, you know, I could name a few on that list that are unbelievably mentally strong, and that's why they're there. And good counter clearance from Shane Thompson, and we are all square as we hit the halfway point on the match clock. 3-3, still a long way to go. Both players need five frames. Well, Deej, you mentioned the, the Challenger series. Let's let's dip into the Challenger while the balls are being rank, uh, racked. Peter Mullaney has beaten Matt Brilly seven frames to three to take Challenger eight final. Ian Ali beat Johan Attard to win mm. Challenger seven. And let me run you through the 16. Callum Singleton, he finishes the year as the number one. Brilliant performance from Callum. Ian Ali has had a brilliant weekend. Quarter final and the victory to push, him out, push himself all the way up to number two. Johan Attard, who he beat in that final, is three. Then Josh Corkett, Jez Graham, Neil Britton. Peter Mullaney, who needed to win that to get inside the top 16. He jumps up to seventh. Cameron Tolley. Andy Williams, Matt Brearley, Richie Oliver, Connor Jones, Dracula, Lewis Roberts, Aaron Priest, Matt Cook and Ryan Marcos and the unlucky man, Jake Dylan Newlove. The butcher. Who misses out because Peter Mullaney won the final match of the Challenger season and he misses out in 17th place. A tough, tough one for the butcher. I think the butcher is the unluckiest man on the planet. But there's some, some stories, like he fell asleep during one of his matches in China. He drove, flew, flew all the way to China and fell asleep. I'm not sure if that's unlucky, <laughs> though. <laughs> yeah, but it was just hilarious. And then when he was going to a pool event, his, uh, the, boot, the boot of his car wasn't, wasn't shut properly and his suitcase fell out on the motorway and got hit by the car behind it. <laughs> and it oh, just sums dear. up the butcher. Oh, but, the but he is a player that should be in the pro ranks and it's unfortunate that he has finished 17th. He's still a young man though as he continues in his pool career and, and for me because I, I played with him back in uh, early in uh, England days and his game was there but his mental strength wasn't but he's getting mentally stronger and stronger by the year and I think he's going to be a big danger to go deep next year in the Challenger Series. I mean, look at the, some of the players that haven't made pro there. Ian Whitehorn, Mark Fleming and Gary Clark and Clank here there as well. Oh, it's frightening. Jamie Burnett, who missed out, he lost in the semis today. He was so close. Gareth Higgins, Daryl Whitworth. Connor Tracy, Morgan McGuinness, yeah. Colin Bedford. That's the great names not uh, not making it through. Wow. It's crazy, isn't it? Mm, it really is. 
Good break here from Shane. Good split of the balls this time. Less work to do, more about plotting your route. And that is what Shane is so good at. Patterns and cue ball control is Shane Thompson's game. Gonna have one problem ball here. And he doesn't want to be bridging now playing it, but that's perfect. He's just found the gap with the white where his cue can just go nicely through. And when he pots it down the rail, he will be bouncing off perfect from either ball really, depends where he lands. If he lands on straight and the one in the middle, he's perfect. He's missed it. Oh. Yeah, you remember a frame ago, two frames ago, when Craig Waddingham purposely used the pocket and Shane was shaking his head because he didn't think it should go in. Well, that, a, that's come back yeah. to, you know, <laughs> doing some favours. I don't think uh, Shane played that, though. No, <laughs> he absolutely he, yeah. did not. But he didn't even apologise for it. Usually you'd see Shane hold his hand up for that. Might do it at the end of the frame. Got a feeling he will. And this is to take the lead. Let's get halfway. Yeah, halfway to the number he needs. Four, three ahead. Excellent clearance. A little bit of help in that top right-hand corner. You know, you would, I think Ian Alley's going to do some damage next year. And Johan. Them two. I, I, I rate Johan so much. They say he's the best in Malta, which you can't argue with. They call him the Maltese Goat. So that's his nickname. And Ian Alley, Ian Alley over the years has proved how good he is. And I think next year, with the money available and the prestige of ultimate pool growing and growing and growing I think all these players are going to be putting in some major time and I think you know the top three there will be, well there's so many that can do damage but them top three for me stand out and I think they will be super dangerous next year you won't be drawing them after you know the seeded players seeing Ali coming through or you know Calum Singleton Johan Josh Cook any of them any of them top 16 you know that's a tough first game yeah, it, it is, and it's a case of who puts the time in, who gets themselves met ready for these tournaments and gets those opportunities. It's going to be a fascinating season. To see the tour expand to 96, how's that going to play out? Are the established names going to continue to do the damage? Can somebody from the challengers jump out the pack? Oh, he's not there. He's not hit them good. And he knows that he give it a little... Headbutt in the air, trying to push that red in the middle. And this is where Shane is clinical. These little finishes where you need really good cue ball control to land right side of certain shots. You know, he's going to play this plant. Yellow ball. You know, if there's anyone watching at home, any amateur pool players that want to watch cue ball control, Shane Thompson's one of the best in the world. And I hope I haven't jinxed him on this finish, but. These are the finishes where he stands out for me. Yeah, last season, he just had that cue ball on an absolute string. He felt like he was... It's like watching great players. It just felt like he was getting easy finishes frame after frame after mm. frame. And it's not the case. It's just the way he connects it, the way he controls that cue ball. It just looks easy. Yeah, I totally agree. And also the way he, he caresses the ball around. It's not. It's a different style to Craig Waddingham. Actually, it's, it's interesting to see them playing each other because you see Craig punching them in a lot more, and whereas Shane floats them in and cues them in, and it, he's barely hitting the cue ball at times and just caressing that cue ball around the table. Yeah, he's got one of the best cue actions in the game, Shane. He just looks like he's barely hitting the ball, but gets so much reaction with it, especially using a 10 mil tip. Yeah. Show us how good it That's huge in ball terms as oh, well. Oh, massive. So I don't know how he cues a ball on the rail or but it obviously works for him. He actually inspired me to go up a tip size a bit actually. My IQ went down to like seven point two, super small, didn't want it to. And I never thought I'd get a new queue, ever. But I went and got one about nine mil. Just Big change that. Oh it is well and it 
I had it for three weeks and got to the pro final. It just showed that with this cloth and these balls, you don't really need to be fizzing the ball around. You know, it's it's always a trace, isn't it? Yeah. Just a, a widening of the angle, or a check it up, or a little touch here, or a little touch there. It's, yeah. it's not you don't need more than that. No, and Shane is perfect example of that. And we'll see how good his cue ball is now when he's got to come off one or two cushions to find that gap. I think he might come off two and use that line. If he comes off two, he's down the line longer. Yeah, there you go, two. There you go. And he's absolutely perfect. And there you go, and that's that little trace. Mm. Just that little trace, just to widen the angle, come down two rather than one. Because the cloths are so quick, it's not like we're playing on, you know, thick. You're not playing down your local pub or in certain clubs where the tables are quite slow you know you're playing on the quickest tables in the world so you don't actually need a small tip and anyone that I coach or anyone that I speak to in the after advice I always say I'd round about between 8.5 and 9 nowadays when it used to be probably low 8, eight mil tips and you know the times are changing yeah they really are we've seen that actually number of players going that way. But Shane opens up a gap for the first time here. 5-3. He goes in front. And just under 20 minutes on the match clock. Craig needs just to halt this momentum, get himself a couple of good chances. It felt like we've seen a lot of Shane in this match, and Craig's working off scraps. Still time to turn it round. If you weren't with us earlier, then Amy Beecham has won the Women's Series title, beating Megan Proctor in the final. It was actually a fantastic final. Megan was ahead, had opportunities to go further ahead, didn't take it. Amy came back and in the, the dying seconds wrapped things up by going in front and then letting the clock no, run Shane, out. Shane she does finish second in the rankings, though. Harriet Haynes had done enough to guarantee finishing top. They shared the trophies this year, two apiece, two for Harriet, two for Amy, but it was Harriet that got the ranking nod thanks to a better performance in the tournaments they didn't win. Also worth mentioning while we're talking about the women's game, Emma Cunningham won two titles as well in the mini-series that were non-ranked, but essentially very, very similar fields. So. Three big hitters in the, the mm. ladies' It's just a uh, shame that isn't ranked. Yeah, I, I was thinking it could be, it's one of those, it could be. I can understand why it isn't, but it, it could be. There's a lot of the same players are on it, the majority of the same players. He's just caught the wrong side of that red, Craig. And I think that's, he hasn't had a shot in a couple of frames now. That could be a... Yeah, just getting a little bit yeah. frozen out, a little bit cold. That was it, frozen out. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Yeah, he's got a chance to go into it again. Play this with loads of bottom left. And come off the cushion and into the red. Does not want to stick on the yellow, though. Perfect. What a shot that is. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's where we're talking about Craig Wanningham's partner ability. There's a lot of people that can't play that shot because they don't have the cue action, but that was just fantastic. <laughs> I do like the shirts Ultimate Pool are providing. Some of them, some crackers this week. There's been some brilliant. What's been your favourite? Um, <laughs> it's always been a favourite of mine. I could never wear it, but um, Brian Halcrow's. Yeah, the buzzer. Be. Or Liam White's Danger Mouse. Yeah, Liam's is good. I like Christophe Lambert. I thought he looked oh, sharp. It's he looks the flag. smartest. Yeah. yeah, but he looks good in anything. <laughs> yeah, he does. He, he does. Just, he's got everything that man. He and was, then he was uh, hiding last night though. I was watching the game with him. <laughs> He walked in and we all started booing him. <laughs> you know, we've got another Frenchman on the tour next year. Yannick, he'll do really well. He Such will. a good player. Yeah, he comes with a big reputation. Being one of the best players in France for a long time. One of the best players in the world for a long time. Mm. Black ball world champion that he won. And then he got to the World Master final. Oh, Craig's a bit short there. Because he's only bridging now. He probably wanted another roll or two on that. Just because his hand's going to be quite awkward, and he's got a he's got to cue the one near the rail, and there's a possibility of going behind the black, and that's why he's taking his time here. See, it's just a bit awkward, and he doesn't want to go behind the black like that. 
but he's good. Yeah. That's that's a super shot. That was tougher than it looked. And this is he's two pots away, but this will be a super out. If you think about the first shot that he played, that went wrong, and the shot that followed it was excellent and great control thereafter. He's up for this now. He's he's back. Yeah, the little stare good. after the stare into space after he potted that last yellow. As a player, you know you're in the zone. You're focused. Great response to a couple of frames from Shane Thompson. Was frozen out there for a little while. He's responded 5 4 now. 16 16 left on the match clock. Keep an eye on that. Shane needs three. Craig needs four. I think we're definitely going to go into that 15 seconds a shot unless Shane won three very quickly. That's and well, then the match clock gets involved. Imagine finishing the season on a six red shootout. Absolutely. That would be fantastic. It's Craig's break, so it's like a break of serve that. So hopefully, you might see him changing his break. He's on dry quite a bit. Maybe he hits it a bit firmer. Moves the white. Referee just making sure they're really, really tight. Well, the balls have been... Racked up, Deej. Let me ask you about your season. You're going to finish 22nd in the rankings. Mm -hmm. Some good strides forward. You made a final. Yeah. Where do you where do you rank your season? Is it a good step forward? Is that how you're seeing it? Yeah, definitely in this standard. Because I think out the first four of them, I didn't make it past last 32, and then since then I've had two quarterfinals, I think, and a final. So out the last four, I've done well in three of them, and. The other one, I've lost to some great players. You know, it's been usually the big hitters that have taught me out. Shane Thompson's got taught me out. Um, Chris Mellon twice. So and it's just a, you can't always look on results because you can play well and lose, and you've got to take that on the chin because the standard's so high. But I was really pleased the way I've gone this year. I've got some great players and had some great runs. And I'm going to keep practicing, keep putting the work in, and hopefully next year it's bigger and better. Yeah, it's a tough school out there, and you, I think the, the the ability to deal with the, the tough side of the game, the ability to deal with coming on the wrong end of results is is actually huge, being able to do that. I mean, cause I've, there's a lot of players on the list that are below me that I've looked up to my whole life. Like, I'm a massive pool fan. Um, I sit there and watch pool when I'm not even playing pool. I sit around the arena, watch my friends, I watch everything Ultimate Pool do that I'm not there. So, oh, Craig... Tricky layout, but yeah. it was a chance, and Craig misses his first ball. There's people like Carl Boyce there that I keep looking. I've always looked up Phil Harrison. He's around about me, and you know, there's, there's just some, there's just players. You know. I was watching Rob Chilton play this weekend. I know he hasn't turned up a lot this year, but he, he, he was frighteningly good in a couple of his games, and you know, it was just one of them. It's just being a pool fan for so many years, and now being a amongst it all, it's. I love it. Yeah, well put. Next year is going to be huge. Can't wait. Finishing touches to this year, though. Still to happen. Shane Thompson wants to go out on a high. If he was to win today, he'd be the only player that won a tournament last year to, to win a tournament this year. Over oh, yeah. the course of two years, it would be, be quite a big thing. It's McHill didn't win one last year, did he? Shane beat him in the final. And Nick didn't win. Chris did win away from the Pro Series. Chris did win tournaments Chris. in both Melling. Oh, sorry, so Chris did, yeah. just the Pro Series um, specifically. But oh yeah, because Stevie Dempsey won the Grand Slam. Oh, that was both in this year, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, both sorry, his tournaments were this year: Grand Slam and Champions League. Yeah, just the Grand Slam was in December, wasn't it? So it seems seems an age ago. But what a what an event that was! Oh, no one wrote the wrong one. Sorry, that was the, the BT one, the Jordan Shepherd one, wasn't it? Yeah, that was that was the end of last year. And yeah, the, it that. was early. It was very, very early in 2022, yeah. the Grand Slam. Yeah, it was, actually, yeah. It's the only double limb competition we think we've had. Yeah. I like to see the variety. It's I good. do. I wonder how many, like, they call it a double bracket in some places in the world. I wonder how many double bracket events we're going to have. Yeah, you look know forward to finding out. 
Ultimate Pool do provide a lot of fantastic tournaments and look forward to seeing what's on the agenda. We know that the Pro Series is expanding next year. That's exciting for us to look forward to and enjoy. What Plenty do you of think other of tournaments the, as well. Sorry, what do you think of the double um, events, Simon? Do you like them? I, I do. I wouldn't want a huge number of them. I like them for, for, for variety. I wouldn't like them as the norm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. Shane's gone through these nicely. I think he wanted an extra six inches on that. He pulled a face and he's got to come round with a bit of right hand spin and come off probably three cushions. One, two, three. There we go. It was okay. And there's Shane's cue ball again. Unbelievable. Shane Thompson gets himself back two in front this time he pounces on a mistake from Greg Waddingham two frames away from another title already has three pro series titles to his name looking to add a fourth and about Craig has he um, he's not one with ultimate pool not, no, not in the pro ranks he won two titles on the challenger series last year I mean, it's some record he's got. Two last year, two titles on the Challenger Series, two semi-finals from the four events played. This year, <laughs> he's made a final, and he's made three other semi-finals, mm -hmm. uh, and he's obviously made the final here as well. I mean, it's he's been deep a lot. We've seen an awful lot of Greg Waddingham, but yet yeah. to lift silverware in the pro game. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's so about nearly probably ten events. He's got to the semi-final at least in five of them. Is that right? Two finals and three semis. Yeah, he's he missed he missed the, missed, two of them. missed the BT Pro Cup. He missed the Players Championship. Yeah, ten events on the year for Craig Waddingham. Two finals and three semis out of ten events. That is crazy. That's very good. And it puts him and that's enough to put him eighth in the rankings, just to put that into context. That shows how consistent you've got to be nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. And Above oh. him, Mick Hill's number one, he will finish the year as number one. Chris Melling two, Tom Cousins three, Stevie Dempsey four, Jack Whelan five, Gareth Potts six, and Jordan Shepard seven. And then you've got Craig Waddingham in eighth place. And can I just give a shout out to Stevie Dempsey who's missed three events and is also fifth? Fourth. Yeah, it Actually, helps if you win two. <laughs> it does, it does. But it's a good thing to look about Stevie. He's not done um, as good as he'd probably expect to do on the Pro Series, but the Monday night events and stuff like that, he seems to, you know, did he win the Grand Slam? Won the Grand Slam. Beat Craig. Yeah, which was the double limb, and he also won the Champions League. Yeah. The Champions Beating League. Aaron in the final, yeah, he yeah. beat Aaron Davis. Champions League's coming up soon as well. Mm -hmm. Don't have to qualify for that now. <laughs> result for you yeah and even though I do miss Stoke <laughs> <laughs> it's a tricky little layout to start with here this is a test to Shane Thompson's cue ball I think this is the shot if he, if he pots this and lands nice on the next ball I think he's out he just needs to watch this flick on the yellow and there we go I think he's going to be okay you don't be wrong, it's still still tough. Possibly one more positional shot you feel. If you think in bottom right, it's then the one to bottom left to get on one of those two, ideally the top one of the two reds together, then the rest can unfold. Well, he's going to leave the one to bottom right and get there now. He's just going to play a nice little soft screw. I think he's going to have to maybe screw into the yellow. Oh, I can't see because it was headed away the yellow or maybe the, sort of the black and yellow together yeah, now he's he is, oh, I think he's got a nice little gap for his cue because I think he's going to have to play this now and then on the red into the bottom right as we look at it he's going to have to screw into one of the yellows to hold for the black oh no he hasn't got he hasn't got a nice little guy this could go wrong this could go wrong there we go 
Yeah, he want, I think it would have been better for him if he could have got on the top one of those two reds first, dropped it in, then he's got all the angle in the world to play on the one to the bottom corner. The way he played, he was going for ultra precision and it's just not happened for him. He's going to pull off the side rail and trying to cut it in and hold on a yellow. This is one for the TikTok. <gasps> oh, great shot. Not on the eight ball, though. Wow. As we tick into the 15 seconds of shot part it of the match. There's been some unbelievable shots played tonight. Well, just caught the back end of the cue ball flying in, misses the eight ball. So for all that hard work throughout that visit, Shane Thompson turns it over to Craig Waddingham and just what Craig Waddingham needed an opportunity to get back within one as we are into the final 10 minutes. This match clock is going to play its part. We're at 15 seconds a shot now as well. Could we see a sick thread? There's every chance. There's time. There's enough time for Greg to get to get to eight. Definitely enough time for Shane to get to eight. But you also feel the match clock could well trick out. Tick out. It's probably the oh, oh, that's a kick. Geez. Is he using towel and chalk? No, he's not. Well, there you go. He no. deserves it. I'm only joking. <laughs> I actually spoke to him about that earlier. He said, Did you? Yeah, he prefers the feel of it. I think the, as in the, the way the having, a, having a cube rather than a, yeah. a, a, a cylinder. I actually said that in the group chat. I thought if this asked for any feedback to him, I said, have you made cube towel? I said, I think you'd get a lot more sales. Because I'm fed up of dropping mine at rolling away. <laughs> It's not cost him on this occasion. He actually had a couple of big kicks in the in the semi-final as well. I think it does affect the kicks, the chalk. It really does. That new V10 stuff seems to be fantastic. Oh, he got another one. That was another kick. That's two in the visit, so, you know, very relevant now. That is, I mean, it's monumental. Absolutely monumental how big that is. I'm going to sell him a town chalk after this. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I've never... Let's have a look at this. Watch this jump here. Wow. It, 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 so, it kicks so badly, he nearly misses the pot. I mean, it's... If, he, if, if there's no kick there, the cue ball... The, the pot goes centre pocket and the cue ball's six inches away from going in the, the corner pocket, if not more. Maybe eight inches. Yeah, it's, that's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty speechless about that because, you know, if you go down to your local club and say, oh, I got a kick to get on the black and I'm, I went in half, they probably wouldn't believe you. <laughs> but that was just, that was scary. Look at Shane. Look, I think Shane's telling him then that's how much it jumped. Yeah, that was, oh, that, what a massive moment. What what an absolutely massive moment. We're, we're talking about 6-5, 7 minutes 58 on the clock and... You know, all to play for. All of a sudden, it's 7 4, and Craig Waddingham has it all to do. That was absolutely huge. This moment of the tournament. And then he's got a ball. So I'd say I would have summed it up if he went dry. But these reds look nice. All yellows. Yeah, personal preference here, but they have opened up, haven't they? And he's not wasting any time. Yeah, I don't blame him. He doesn't want that clock to start to really hurt him. He wants to get at least one back right here and now and and leave six and five and a half, six minutes on the clock. Remember, he has to win three frames minimum in the next seven minutes, 30. He'd ideally like four. All that while Shane doesn't win any. Yeah, it's a tough ass for Craig, but... It's easily doable at this standard, you know. Shane goes dry next, and all of a sudden he clears up, and then he breaks and clears again. It's seven all. Desmond seven seven. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've got to keep saying it. I stuck to my guns. But, you know, I noticed this week a lot of people that I know have bought the app this week to watch the commentary and to watch the stream, and you know, big shout out to them who've. Oh, good shot. Who've done it? I think you get great value for your money with the stream. There's so much coming over the next 12 months. Yeah. It really is worth every penny. I watch it all the time. On my iPad, throw it on in the background, watch me lose to other players. So. Greg has flown through this one. This is a great response to what happened in the previous frame. Yeah, and he's not wasting any time. Great. 
no kick on that one. And Sorry, quick. Six yeah. he left. He's managed to do that so quickly, he's left six and a half minutes. So that's taken him a minute and a half to win that frame. Back to 7-5. He must feel sick, because that would have been six all. Yeah. Still shaking his head. You can just see that out the mm. corner of your eye. Not happy at all. Two kicks and four shots. It's just... Not believable. Yeah, and the first kick you can kind of write off and say, you know, it happens, I'm still perfect here. But that second one absolutely destroyed his chances. And also with the 15-second shot clock, you can't even get the ball cleaned. Not really, no, it's your extension. time. Yeah. yeah. But Shane, this could be, I think this could be a moment, because I think the way Craig sort of gone into that attitude now where you're throwing your arm at it, so I think he's going to get every chance he takes. Yeah, that, I said it right then. I thought it was a little tongue twister. <laughs> Takes every chance he gets. He needs it. If Shane makes a ball here, it could be curtains for Craig Waddingham. Shane has to just focus on trying to make one, but Craig is ready and poised to jump out of his chair. Mm. And there's not, they've not been breaking amazingly, have they, tonight? They've had a few where they've not hit it right, but let's see how Shane hits it. A few and offs. Let's see, oh, he's he not hit. it. Yeah, he oh, he gets it. the reward, though. Oh, my goodness. What a break, considering... That was not the best he's ever hit the break. But what a chance he's got here. He's got a huge chance. <laughs> are them reds a plant? Because if they are, they're, they're so easy. The yellows are not too tough. He's got one positional yeah, shot to play on yeah, yellows. yellows. Just the one at the bottom of the table. Does he go straight after it? No. Does he leave it last ball? If he leaves it last ball... He's going to have to play the black and probably one of the middles. Yeah. I mean, you can understand why he leaves it last ball, because the easiest ball to play on after... He could take it now. The one at the bottom is the is the eight ball. He could get... No, he's not. I was thinking, mate, he could have screwed up now, but... Ah, uh, see, I know he's, he's, he's going to leave the one into yeah. the middle to the last. There you go. It's nice thinking. Look how quick Shane's moving. Swagging. It's a full-on sprint. Yeah. He's saying ball. Oh. 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 That is what the 15 second shot clock does. You just don't have time. You just don't. I mean, it's so much drama, it's fantastic, but, you know. How does he's he just miss this? That. I know. It's really. It's going to oh, be a loss. Poor miss. And the frame was there for him. He's just got to control his pace down the table. This is tough for Cray, getting the loss of turn and hiding the white. Oh, that's oh a brilliant. That is phenomenal. What a shot from Craig Wanningham. I've just tapped my own leg. Yeah, like that I was, was so good. Because if he gets that wrong, he leaves Shane the angle on the yellow to come mm. down the table. If Shane hits this, he's put in Craig, he's put a big pull out and... No. He hits no. it after hitting the cushion, therefore it's a foul. Have to hit, hit a cushion after contact. He hasn't done that, so great chance here for Craig to get it back to 7-6. And look at Shane. He can't believe what he's done. Oh, it's unbelievable. And I think he, Shane was concentrating so much on getting on his last yellow. He's not even took that yellow into consideration. Yeah, you saw him and we were joking about him running around the table. He just wanted to double check the angle he had. And it's hard to do at 15 seconds a shot because you, you do run out of time quickly. Yeah, you, you do. Short your queue a few times, walk around the table. and Oh, Shane looks like he's struggling there. Doesn't want to be bridging. Perfect. Yeah, this is where you really need to be mentally strong. He knows he may have more work to do. It could be a six red shootout. It could be in the next frame. I think it's crazy that when you're losing at this stage, you, you're, you just let your arm go. How well you play. Like, Craig, Craig, no way Craig would have took them out that quick in normal, normal game scenario, so... Three minutes, 43, when the clock stops. Seven frames to six. And it's his break. When Craig Waddingham went in off with that kick to go three frames behind, it looked over. It looked how, You looked at the clock, you looked at the situation, you looked at the air and you thought, how can this turn around? Well, it has. Mm. He's one big break away from having an opportunity to tie these scores up. There is a very real possible possibility we could see a six red shootout to finish our season here with the pro series don't get me excited like that don't give me hope i've never i've never commentated on one i've only seen a couple i've been in a couple lost them all so let's talk about that <laughs> but <laughs> well i'll be asking you for uh, what, what do you need to do to win a six uh, red shootout teach uh, yeah don't ask me sir i nearly fell over in one once trying to go that quick but if it goes to a six red shootout who do you fancy 
Well, Shane's had a lot more experience of them. I'm not even sure if Craig's been in one, but Shane's had all the experience in them, and he, he's got a big-time love-hate relationship with them. Yeah, he does. But first of all, Craig needs to, to find a ball. He has to find a ball here. If Shane comes up with an opportunity of a dry break, it could be over. White. It's fine. Yellow balls, red balls. <gasps> he's not going to be on a yellow. He's on a yellow. Yeah, he's, he's on one, one. one to the centre. Yeah, and I think... I think these are gone. I mean, ordinary circumstances. He doesn't miss these. And this is where, for me, obviously Craig's at the table and his focus is just on the finish. For, for Shane, you still see him, towel in his hand, head in his towel. He is still thinking about what's gone before. He needs to just get that out of his mind. Clear his mind now, prepare himself for what will be a break coming up in a couple of minutes' time. If he gets to the table in this frame, it's a massive bonus. But for Shane, it's about the break at 7-7. Seven, seven. I think the six red shoot out won't happen now. I think Shane's going to have probably about two minutes on his break. He'd have to make a finish, though. Yeah. Craig's got to get out yet. Just not the right angle this time, having to play short position, but does that nicely. Does that take your extension, make sure, Craig? He's already used it. Has he? Yeah, used oh. it on his first shot. There you go, you can oh, see plenty tight. of room. Plenty of room. Although he's come back a little bit further oh, than he wanted, uh, but there's still room. Sad. Oh, a big pocket as well. What a final this is. This is, it's not been an amazing time. There's been a lot of missed balls, but for entertainment and drama, this is what we want to see. So. It's brilliant. This is drama. This is Paul. And Craig Waddingham has tied the scores up. When he made that mistake, oh, he got the kick. Let's get it right. It wasn't on him. Three behind. Not much time left on the clock. He's up for it. Did you see that stare then? It was scary. Yeah. And Shane Thompson has had a an unbelievable chance to win this match already and it was a careless miss is this where the pill gods punish you again and you go dry or you go in off or oh i'm nervous yeah so shane's focus will be on that break he's had some big breaks he's had some some breaks he's not hit as well that's had good results he's had a couple of unlucky as well the one in the beginning of the match where he got king kicked in off in particular but it's going to come down to the next two minutes, 21 seconds. And Shane Thompson with the break. This is where you hope the referee's racked him properly. <laughs> you want the perfect rack. And it is a rule. You can't check the rack in Ultimate Pool. Only in the red, six red. Here we go, then. White. He crunches them. He makes a ball. How's the split? It's good. Does he have an opening red? Does he have an opening? Does yellow's an option? I like reds here. I do. But I think he's got a, he might have to cue that long red or he might have to play a three ball plant. Yeah. Oh, I think three ball plant at the side. Is the long red a, a awkward cueing? Yeah, it is. From the overhead angle, I thought it was just to the right of it. This is huge. He gets the three ball plant, but nothing else goes right in that shot. The red doesn't go. The other one goes against the yellow. It's going tactical, this. Or can he squeeze it in? Is it deceptive? No, that can't go, can it? No. 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 Just taking the bucket. This could be six red shootout, Simon. Yeah, and Craig oh. is going to just play, to play the loss of turn. Craig may get one half a chance here. If you're Shane now, you're slowing the clock right down. Yeah, because... Yes, he's got a pot to the corner now, and it's not really a good chance to make a clearance, but you, you, it's about stopping Craig getting a chance here. Oh, he hits oh, the yellow. Fouled, he's fouled, he's fouled. Ball in hand. Oh, but look where the red's gone. Does that yellow go down? The red Two one? bad yellows. That's Ball in hand here yeah, for Craig. Goes. Oh, if this goes, it makes oh, a difference. Look at Shane. Look at Shane. Oh, my goodness. Don't foul there, Shane. And you probably are in a six red shootout. All eyes on Craig Waddingham now. He's got one cannon to make. So, which ball are you playing off? Are you playing it off the wall in the middle? Oh, is he uh, playing it now? He could play it now off either. I think you're playing it now with right hand side. And you're going into it. Just don't miss the pot, Craig. Oh, where's the white? He's in off. Oh, more twists. 31 oh, oh seconds. Oh and they are all there. 
Oh my goodness. There's enough time. There is just enough time. 22 seconds. Got to cue this one in, and then it'll be two stop shots oh. if he gets it right. Shane, you got to hurry up, mate. This is tight. He's run out of time now. He's run out of time. Or is he? Oh my god, what a final! What an unbelievable finish to the final. Shane Thompson with the buzzer beater of all buzzer beaters gets his hands on another Pro Series title. Oh my God, I'm speechless. That is incredible. Oh. What drama here at the end of an unbelievable season here with Ultimate Paul. Shane Thompson flying round the table, wins it with one second to spare. What a moment. I feel for Craig, I feel for Craig. He's played the cannon and gone in. Oh, Heartbreaking for Craig Waddingham, it really is. It's another time he's going to come up just short, but it is Shane Thompson's time once again. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back for the presentation. Welcome back inside the arena. The Ultimate Pool Pro Series 2022 comes to a conclusion, and in true Ultimate Pool fashion, they left it to the last second. I think I speak for everyone inside this venue that that was unbelievable, but it must be murder for the players. Let's hear it for both of them. Craig Waddingham and Shane Thompson. <laughs> Just a crazy, crazy match, a crazy final. It is unfortunate there has to be a loser in it, but let's hear it. What a player he is. Craig Waddingham, everyone. May I? I, genuinely, I don't even. I don't even know where to start there. How, how do you? How do you? Sum up how you feel at the moment? I must have run over a cat or something. Jesus, I don't know what. Uh, <laughs> that kick to go. It's just two kicks in four shots. That's unheard of. And fair play, to Shane. I think he played a better pull, but um, a bit sick really. It was. It was a crazy finish. But this is ultimately been a very, very good season for you in terms of your consistent level of performance, top 10 in the rankings, brilliant season. How do you reflect on your first uh, year as a pro? Yeah, enjoyed it. Yeah, um, it's been as good as I thought it'd be, to be fair. Played some good pool, played some bad pool, but um, no, I enjoyed it. And I know you want to give a shout out to your, to your boys as well. We've been with you all weekend, yeah, stuck yeah. around to the bitter end. <laughs> yeah, my boys are here. They come every, every weekend, so um, cheers to them. We'll see you in January, mate. Best luck. Cheers. Craig Waddingham, everyone. Well, for a bloke who won three titles last year, you could sort of say that Shane Thompson has pretty much done it and got the T-shirt with Ultimate Pool, but he's never quite done anything quite like that. Let's hear it for Shane Thompson. I'd love to strap a heart rate monitor to you right now. No, you don't. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know what to say, really. Um, last second, I think, wasn't it? Um, I'm speechless. Um, I've had a tough month off the table, so... Um, yeah, over the moon. It was it was a mental game. It looked like you had it, then you didn't, then you had it, then you didn't. Is it is it possible to think clearly in that sort of maelstrom, or are you just riding on the tide and just hoping it falls your way? You got to hope for uh, for the for the chances, really. And I don't I don't know how Craig's gone in off there, but I'm I'm so glad he did. <laughs> no, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I've never ran that fast in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and your fourth Pro Series title, obviously you won three last year, a, f a phenomenal season. We talked earlier, uh, as a, and Simon in the studio, and you, we talked about how good your level had been all year, but you hadn't felt like you'd really got the rewards. So you've been off your old queue, you get a new one, and you go and win a trophy in three days with it. That's how you do it. Well, I think under them circumstances, I think this is the best one I've won. Um, brand new queue, day, well, two days old now, two and a half days old. So, um, yeah, I'm over the moon. <laughs> Well, a fantastic performance, mate. We're going to let you have your moment. Your fourth Ultimate Pool Trophy is on its way. We're going to bring in Neil Toms, Tournament Director, to make the presentations. Your Ultimate Pool Pro Series 8 champion is Shane Thompson. 